In other words, if you are in a contest with the universe, he's going to stir up that contest until it becomes ridiculous. And so he sets you such tasks as saying, now of course, in order to be a true person, you must give up yourself. Be unself. So the Lord sits, uh, steps down out of heaven and says, the first and great commandment is, thou shalt love the Lord thy God. You must love me. Well, that's a double bind. You can't love on purpose. You can't be sincere purposely. It's like trying not to think of a green elephant while taking medicine. <laughs> but if a person really tries to do it, so, you know, this is where Christianity is rigged. You should be very sorry for your sins. And though everybody knows they're not, but they think they ought to be, and so they go around trying to be penitent or trying to be humble. And they know the more assiduously they practice it, the phonier and phonier the whole thing gets. And so in this way, it's, a, what, it's called a, the technique of reductio ad absurdum. If you think you have a problem, you see, and that you're an ego and that you're in difficulty, the answer that the Zen master makes to you is, show me your ego. I want to see this thing that has a problem. When Bodhidharma, the legendary founder of Zen, came to China, a disciple came to him and said, I have no peace of mind. Please pacify my mind. And Bodhidharma said, bring out your mind here before me and I'll pacify it. Well, he said, when I look for it, I can't find it. So Bodhidharma said, there, it's pacified. See, because when you look for your own mind, that is to say your own particularized center of being, which is separate from everything else, you won't be able to find it. But the only way you'll know it isn't there is if you look for it hard enough to find out that it isn't there. And so everybody says, all right, know yourself, look within, find out who you are. Because the harder you look, you won't be able to find it. And then you'll realize that it isn't there at all. There isn't a separate you. Your mind is what there is, everything. But the only way to find that out is to persist in the state of delusion as hard as possible. That's one way. I don't say the only way, but it is one way. And so almost all spiritual disciplines, meditations, prayers, etc., etc., are ways of persisting in folly, doing resolutely and consistently what you're doing already. So if a person believes that the earth is flat, you can't talk him out of that. He knows it's flat. You go out of the window and see it's obviously it looks flat. So the only way to convince him that it isn't is to say, well, let's go and find the edge. And in order to find the edge, you've got to be very careful not to walk in circles. You'll never find it that way. So we've got to go consistently in a straight line, due west, along the same line of latitude. And eventually when we get back to where we started from, you've convinced the guy that the earth is round. But that's the, that's the only way that'll, tell, that'll teach him. Because people can't be talked out of illusions. Well now, there is another possibility, however. This is more difficult to describe. Let's say uh, we, we take as the basic supposition, which is the thing that one sees in the experience of Satori or, or awakening or whatever you want to call it, that this now moment in which I'm talking and you're listening is eternity. That although we have somehow conned ourselves into the notion that this moment is rather ordinary and that we may not feel very well and that uh, we're sort of vaguely frustrated and worried and so on and that it ought to be changed this is it so you don't need to do anything at all but the difficulty about explaining that is that don't you you mustn't try not to do anything because that's doing something and how to explain that because there's nothing to explain. It's the, it, it is the way it is now. See? And if you understand that, it will automatically wake you up.
That's why Zen teachers use shock treatment to uh, sometimes while they hit people or shout at them or cre create a sudden surprise. Because it is that jolt that suddenly brings you here. See, there's no road to here because you're already there. And if you ask me, how am I going to get here? It'll be like the famous story of the American tourist in England who asked some yokel the way to Upper Tuddenham, a little village. And the yokel scratched his head and he said, Well, sir, I do know where it is, but if I were you, I wouldn't start from here. <laughs> So you see, when you ask, how do I attain the knowledge of God? How do I attain nirvana, liberation? All I can say is it's the wrong question. Why do you want to attain it? Because the very fact that you're wanting to attain it is the only thing that prevents you from getting there. You already have it. But of course, uh, it's, it's up to you. It's your privilege to pretend that you don't. That's your game, that's your life game, that's what makes you think you're an ego. And uh, when you want to wake up, you will. Just like that. If you're not awake, it shows you don't want to. You're, you're still playing the hide part of the game. You're still, as it were, the, the, the self, pretending it's not the self. That's what you want to do. So you see, in that way too, you're already there. When you understand this, a funny thing happens. And some people uh, misinterpret it. You will discover as this happens that the distinction between voluntary and involuntary behavior disappears. You will realize that what you describe as things under your own will feel exactly the same as things going on outside you. You watch other people moving and you know you're doing that. Just like you're breathing. Or circulating your blood. If you don't understand what's going on, you're liable to get crazy at this point. And to feel that you are God in the Jehovah sense. Say that you actually have power over other people. So that you could alter what they're doing and that you are omnipotent in a very crude, literal kind of Bible sense, see? And uh, a lot of people feel that and they go crazy. That put them away. They think they're Jesus Christ and that everybody ought to fall down and worship. That's only they got their wires crossed. They haven't been able to, this experience happened to them, but they don't know how to interpret it. So be careful of that. Jung calls it inflation people who get the holy man syndrome that uh, I suddenly discovered that I'm the Lord and that I'm above good and evil and so on and that, that uh, therefore I start giving myself airs and graces but the point is everybody else is too if you discover that you're that then you ought to know that everybody else is well for example let, let's see how in, in other ways you might realize this. Most people think when they open their eyes and look around that what they are seeing is outside. 